Hi there, I'm so excited for you to be here. My name is Juji. Welcome to HD by Z. On this channel, I explore human design through relationships and personal development. Today, I am going to be doing an interview with the very first couple that I ever did human design coaching with, Megan and Erin. They were having a lot of conflict in their relationship. There was a lot of misunderstandings going on, as there often is, and we sorted a lot of it out. So it's been over a year since we did that work together, and I want to check back in with them. I want to see what it is that they're experiencing, and you guys get to witness it. I'm so excited. So before we get started, let's look at their charts together. All right, so this is Megan. She's a generator. She's sacral authority, single definition, a 5-2 profile on the left angle cross of distraction. And one of the first things that I pointed out to Megan is her channel of caring, which is actually unconscious in her. And then also this channel of struggle, which she has both conscious and unconscious in her chart not to mention the projection field of this 5-2 profile. And here we have Aaron, who is a manifesting generator. He's triple split. He's emotional authority, a 3-5 profile on the right angle cross of the vessel of love. And guess what? Aaron also has the channel of struggle in his chart, which we talked about. And then we talked at length about what it means to be in a relationship with somebody who has this emotional authority wave built in and what it means to be open in that area and be taking in emotionality from your partner. Here are Megan and Erin together and they have three open centers in their connection chart. So it's six and three better to be free which is interesting because he is a triple split who needs a lot of leeway outside of the relationship. She's a single definition, so she's not necessarily looking to connect like split definition people are. So there does need to be a lot of freedom in this relationship. They have two electromagnetic connections together, the channel of maturation, from the root to the sacral, which is all about going through different cycles within the relationship. And then the channel of judgment, which sounds kind of bad, but I always say to people who have this as an electromagnetic connection, that it's really all about judging what doesn't work. In this case, what doesn't work about relationships and course correcting in a very powerful way. So uh, Megan and Aaron get to make up their own rules about what it means to them to be in a relationship together. All right. Welcome, Aaron and Megan. I'm so excited for you guys to be here. It's so wonderful to reconnect with you after it's been almost a year, actually, since we worked together consistently. And um, I just want to start by getting a sense of where you guys were in your relationship when you decided that you would like a little extra insight from human design. And um, what what was it that you, um, what, what was potentially the resistance you were meeting that you really wanted to do this? I recall back that far. I think <laughs> it was our eating habits is what really propelled us into human design for me. First off, I I had heard about it briefly before, but I hadn't really uh, learned the lingo, so it was over my head a little bit. And I was I remember I really wanted to know what kind of eater am I, <laughs> and then if I could find out what kind of eater he was, because we were butting heads on that a lot. And it was just one of those everyday small things that was getting in the way of our connection. Mm -hmm. And what was it that you found out from this initial consultation about how you're here to eat versus how he's here to eat that helped you um, 
not take it personally how he wanted to eat and vice versa. Well, he is more future-based and plant-based and I am more past-based and meat-based. So that right there made a big difference right away. Um, we were pretty much vegan and that was not suiting me well. So once you heard that about yourself, were you able to present it to him in a way that he understood and accepted? Yeah, I think it's easier. It was easier for me to accept it than her to accept my type of eating. No. Because I'm so picky. No. (laughs) But, But actually, I've gotten less picky and I'm not. I'm not vegan anymore either. I'm not eating meat, but I'm still, I'm like eating normal pizza and then eating gluten again, which is not killing me anymore. So I'm not really intolerant too much anymore about that stuff. But I'm doing my best to do my like, you know, night eating or whatever, dark eating in the darkness, but it's kind of hard sometimes. Mm. So... Megan's a consecutive eater, which is one ingredient at a time, and it is much more bent towards meat eating. And you're an indirect eater who's here to eat um, out of UV rays. So uh, during the night hours is when you're here to have your big meals, and it's also not so predicated on meat. And um, one of the most homogenizing things in our world is mealtime. You know, it's what parents struggle the most with. It's, it seems like it was getting in the way of your partnership in a lot of ways. So when you finally gave in that she had her way and you had your way and started experimenting with that, that eliminated a lot of conflict, but Mm -hmm. there was still a lot of differences between you two to sort out. So can you sort of recall back to the time when you heard for the first time about her open emotional, the fact that she's open emotional and that you are defined emotionally, Erin, and what that means? Um, Well, I've learned a lot actually over over this time and I've just learned to basically, I've become more accepting of, of everything that I was a little bit too close-minded about, I mm. think. So, what do you feel like you were close-minded about? Oh, a lot. It, the food part, I think I was also, cause like, I was like, I would be upset if she wanted to eat meat cause I was anti-meat, but you know, I realized, you know, she needs to just nourish herself and be happy. And she's not happy and nourished. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. What about you, Megan? What did you think of this realization that you were taking in his wave? Um, it was pretty huge for me, actually. Uh, it's like the where he says that he's walking down the street and he's all upset and he's just left to fight with his significant other and it's really cold outside and he didn't even have a jacket but as soon as he gets outside he's just like oh gosh I feel so much better (laughs) and I kind of realized that that separation is sometimes needed because I would be in these hysterias (laughs) pretty much um, some sort of um emotional overload overwhelm and if i could get away from the situation him (laughs) (laughs) then i felt so much better that's something else that i've gotten a lot more accepting with is that she needs space and i don't take personal anymore like i used to it's probably because we've done a lot of emotional healing but also because i realized that with the human design thing, the, the aspects of human design, I, I understand that these are things that she needs to, like, be filled 
Mm -hmm. so, so I learned to appreciate them and acknowledge them. Was that something that caused upset previously in the relationship where she would take yeah. the space? Yeah, yeah. Especially with, like with the sleeping and with everything. Like just needing space away from me was no no way out. Because <laughs> I was, you know, still a little bit insecure and like, me, I, I don't know. But also not fully understanding that that's what she needs. It's not personal. It's what she needs, like, mm -hmm. to, to be able to be filled and get peace. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, so a little bit of space is good. When, when needed. Otherwise, we can just be like you know, connected at the hip. But. <laughs> Part of this whole journey has been dealing with our traumas, and that has led us to human design as one of the tools to deal with that. And yeah, so I mean, we're dealing with abandonment issues and attachment issues mainly, I think. Those are two big oh, ones. Yeah. And it's helped to have human design as a language that we can use to talk around some of the things that are just uh, our basic needs. And maybe as people with, you know, uh, um, just dealing with some of the past traumas, hmm. it helps to have those tools. <laughs> I mean, we don't have any tools. <laughs> When, so, you, when you can learn the mechanics of human design and how it works with each other, then you can appreciate the, the, how it affects each other. <clears throat> but specifically with human design, it's so great because I can say, all right, I know I need space and I know that you need uh, not space. <laughs> like, or I also learn. I can't be yelling in your face because that's like the worst thing for you. Even physically, it'd be like me throwing poison at you. So I learned that that's just a bad tool to use when communicating with him. Mm -hmm. so, because of his open valley. Right. The yeah. environment is a really big piece of this. But um, actually, Aaron, you said something really important, which is the language the language around these really basic keynotes. So, you know, you guys are both fifth lines. Megan is conscious, you're unconscious, but her unconscious, her body is a hermit. And I remember talking about the idea that time to recharge in her own aura is not something that you're here to take personally. And like you said, Megan, you know, there might be some abandonment issues behind not being able to accept that until you see very specifically that the word hermit appears in your personality mm -hmm. uh, profile. And so, you know, there's just, it, there's no choice. Like you can't be your best self unless you have that recharge time. It helped a lot too because my daughter is also a hermit. Mm. So she's a two four, two four, a two four, I think. Right. And she went through a, a really big phase where she was like anti dad. And I was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> but then that, I get it now. And I'm like, uh huh, recharge time. Because we spent like the first eight to 10 years together, like all day, you know, every day. So it was mm. a lot. For, for them to handle probably especially not knowing at those ages not coming like not knowing what how it's affecting she they were they were like didn't know how to handle it <laughs> right now, uh, now it makes total sense to me <clears throat> and, after mm -hmm. little... <clears throat> and you guys talked a little bit previously about the valley's environment and how that is very acoustically attuned. And so there's a sensitivity there for how you communicate with one another and how that affects the way that it lands. So basically that it can't land if it's not being acoustically handled correctly. Is mm -hmm. there... 
I mean, honestly, nobody's perfect, but like, do you find yourself slipping back into the, that old pattern, Megan, and then being able to catch yourself <clears throat> in the moment of like, oh, nope, this is not going to, this is not going to end well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're pretty good at catching ourselves when we, if we, if we slip out of the, out of the, off the path, as it were. <laughs> Alignment. <laughs> we, I don't know if she told you, but we went to. Home Depot the other day and sat in like you know the random um, garden, uh, the, one of the garden center like, uh, tables that they sell you know but they're already like set up mm -hmm. and we just sat there and like chatted for a while while people kind of like lingered about and it was great. We talked about mm -hmm. all sorts of stuff and it was super easy peasy and we're like man this would be great. This is like an open center. Uh, you can have a an open center talk group there at Home Depot. Like, all right, two thirty on Friday, we're meeting at Home Depot for an open center talk group. <laughs> well, and you're a triple split, Aaron. So I'm sure you were in heaven because you were getting all of these impersonal yeah. connections. That's what I meant. The triple split part, where yeah, where we can like like I can get the connections without having to like interact with the people. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> came from your suggestion to maybe discuss things in a coffee shop or yeah. you know, something like that or i feel like for me open the, ways for me the the, the a open little bit I'll probably because i'm open valley yeah mm -hmm. the coffee shop is too confined mm -hmm. to be able to i can i'm too into the people's sh shit like like if we were trying to have a conversation at a coffee shop i'd be too into whatever everything else is happening but at Home Depot, I couldn't see what else is happening. So everything is all far away and people were mm -hmm. just mingling and, and just going by it. They didn't come over to us. We're like sitting in, you know, <laughs> we're, we're, we're sitting in patio <laughs> furniture under an umbrella having a chat. <laughs> Whatever works, man. And actually the whole coffee shop recommendation wasn't just the triple split idea, but that is a recommendation across the board for any partnerships where somebody's open and defined because yeah. it's very easy to be overwhelmed as an open emotional person when the uh, wave is being directed towards you. And when you're out in public, coffee shop, restaurant, Home Depot, whatever it might be, um, there's an it's a way to neutralize that wave so it's not so overwhelming because there's other people in the auric field walking in and out not necessarily permanently there but it definitely yeah. takes it down a few notches in terms of intensity mm -hmm. <laughs> sure. um i do also remember talking to you guys about the fifth line because there's a lot of projection field involved in two fifth lines being in partnership, who's projecting what onto whom and how, how is that projection field correct and how is it incorrect, right? So Aaron, you're a three five. So you're still in a trial and error life. That's never gonna go away. That's never going to be different. <laughs> <laughs> And so it can be very uncomfortable having this underlying fifth line body where she's potentially projecting onto you that you shouldn't be making mistakes. What, what uh, came of that realization? I just realized that my theme song should probably, probably be, oops, I did it again. <laughs> The fact that you know that song just warms my heart in every way. <laughs> that was a big Britney fan. <laughs> nice, nice. She's a fifth line, hilariously enough. She's a 5-1. Uh, there you go, see? Perfect. She's an upside to the beginner. <laughs> um, and Megan, you're a conscious fifth line, and I know that there's a lot of projection on the fifth line and the second line. So there was a lot that we were sorting through with how that occurred for you. What do you feel has 
has, has there been a relaxation of like, oh, that's just someone's projection of me. That's cool. Whatever. I don't have to take that on board. Overall, yes. It's still a work in progress. Just like, you know, the whole experiment, of course. <laughs> but um, yeah, overall, it was a huge relaxation into just, I can just do or be or wear whatever I want because it doesn't matter. People are going to perceive me however they perceive me. And that's probably on them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What does that look like in terms of your relationship now? Uh, I think always been really accepting. Mm -hmm. I'm, it's more of what I allow myself to show him as far as my. Um, That kind of makes me wonder, do you two feel like you've be, been able to be more vulnerable with each other through this process? No, we have been. Yeah, I, yeah. I feel like, yeah, absolutely. Mm. I, I've gained more compassion and understanding because <clears throat> it's easier to understand why <clears throat> she feels the way she does about things, stuff like that. A little easier that way now. <laughs> I I find knowing that he has this flow that's really helpful because mm. I used to want to interrupt it a lot more. Mm. I want him to stop and listen to my idea or stop and do it my way. <laughs> and now I'm like, oh, you know, this is really gonna mess up things. So just let him do his thing and it'll all come out great. It usually does. Mm. Um, I'm learning to have more patience. Well, not only are you an MG, but you have the channel 515. So were, were you consistently frustrated and angry when you felt like you were being interrupted? Oh, I, I mean, it's... I still struggle with that. I have to, yeah, that's like something that's hard for me. If I'm in a flow at something at work or something and I get distracted or, or asked to do something different, it's still slightly frustrating. But I try to figure out a way to like switch gears and then go back into the other flow, I guess. And okay. hop on a new flow. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. I've, I've learned recently, you know, I don't know, I'm just, I've got to be the master of my own choices and decisions and you know, I got, I've got all these emotions and feelings and stuff that I have to learn how to be the director of it not let them direct that's really powerful Aaron I love that <laughs> yeah and I guess that comes along with this emotional wave of if I just sit back and wait all of these things that I've been throwing in there seed wise will grow <laughs> yeah. through the emotional wave they come back up and it he comes up with some interesting and beautiful transformation that's so cool i love that <laughs> um i do also remember talking a lot about both of you having the channel of struggle um, Megan, you have it twice, both conscious and unconscious. <laughs> mm. Double struggle. I've been listening to your celebrity um, videos and somebody else had struggle. Oh, There's so many people. <laughs> well, yeah, there was a couple of them, but I, every, anytime somebody does now, I'm like, oh, I know the struggle. <laughs> <laughs> So one of the things I say in partnerships where one person has this channel and somebody doesn't, or they have a gate, but not the whole channel is you're not here to get sucked into the struggle of whoever has the channel, but now both of you guys have this. So it's a recognition within one another that, you know, if it's, if you're not struggling, it's not your life. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not um, struggling to be yourself, then 
you'd be bored. So can you guys check yourselves and be like, oh, that's Aaron's struggle. I'm not going to try and get in the way of that or fix it or try to redirect it and vice versa. Uh, we're definitely better at it now. Uh, I've gotten better at it. I, <clears throat> I'm not going to, yeah, I, I'll give her the room to handle her own struggle and I won't let it affect me emotionally. Hmm. I'll just, I'm just there for her as so as support. Mm-hmm. Neutral, I'm Switzerland. Mm-hmm. Neutral. <laughs> what about you, Megan? Do you feel like you're accepting of your own struggle and his? Yes, more so, much more so. Um, I still, I still find it difficult to separate emotions and struggle and all the things. What's yours? What's mine? Mm. Um, but now that we've had these months of separation, it helps a lot more. Mm. Yes. I guess it's kind of hard for me to imagine, but I still embrace it. understand, but it's hard to imagine what it's like. I have to have all. I have to deal with all of my emotions to get a shot at you. <laughs> and everybody else's too. I know it's hard for her. She gets it just being around her mom. She gets it any, yeah. Anytime she's around people for a consistent amount of time that aren't more in alignment with her, or at least not like me, then she gets pretty. Well, they define emotional yeah. people. I guess we do it. I don't know. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, plus the hermit thing. So I just try oh, yeah. to stay indoors. It hits her. It hits her. Not indoors. She gets but... a... And then it goes to hermit mode. And the trailer heightens. Oh, hermit <laughs> mode is real. It's so real. <laughs> I don't know if it's just social anxiety or what either. But I definitely feel a lot better going out into the world if he's with me. I don't like to go out into the world by myself no. mm. and I'm a single definition so I'm not sure exactly what drives that but maybe I just don't want to go out period mm-hmm. <laughs> single divine and a hermit and I'm just like no someone must drag me please drag me <laughs> you got me I'm deflecting energy out. Mm. yeah he does that he's shiny I mean, I will say that for me, being a hermit also means being very selective about the people that I'm around. And especially, you know, now that I'm older, not going out for the sake of it, but when there's real, when I'm really in the mood Mm -hmm. as a hermit to be around other people, but then still being selective about it. So, I mean, it's a good, um, it's a good compromise. Like I will go out if I get to be with the person that I actually like being around. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's more about the, it's more about the energy that you get to be with, not the what's happening <laughs> for me. Now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Pop into his little bubble and then we go out. <laughs> we might go out later tonight. Yeah. Ooh, now you're getting crazy. <laughs> Halloween, you know, we gotta we uh we decided on costumes. Yeah. We're gonna... it was, we I we very much struggled with being Amber and Johnny. We were gonna be Amber. Very Johnny, much struggled but... with that, but we didn't we didn't do that. We we went really, really ridiculous. Yeah, we're gonna be Christmas. <laughs> what? <laughs> we're gonna be Christmas for Halloween. We got Christmas outfits. To the design, like ugly sweater style you know, Christmas outfit. I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have a stocking and the whole yeah we're gonna we dressed up like Christmas so you know people hate it when you bring out Christmas before Halloween so we thought we'd be Christmas for Halloween. <laughs> you know what I think I appreciate the most about you too is that you have such a good sense of humor and there's such a 
ability to be playful and mischievous and do it your own way. That's, it's yeah. wonderful. It's definitely uh, one of the bigger sparks that keeps us magnetized. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no ever imagination. Yeah. We get bored without each other. Mm. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, and you guys have two electromagnetic connections, which is something that I focus a lot on when I'm talking about couples, but it's not everything, right? The electromagnetics aren't everything. It's also just about how, like your aesthetic, what, like how you like to live your life. What are the, what are the other pillars that keep a relationship together? And I feel like recreating together in a similar way and having similar values in that is so 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 important and i know that you guys have that yeah we're gonna we're trying we're in the process of getting the land saving up and get some land so we can like build some earth style earth ship style structures straw bale something cob but we're not sure everything something wild poverty grass on the roof <laughs> but we want to build we like we like working together we like building together she's a very smart and powerful lady so it's fun to work with her <laughs> um all right guys is there anything that i missed is there anything that you feel like would be important to talk about that i didn't bring up yet <laughs> There's been, yeah, there's been a lot of things that human design has made me real. I mean, even the, my channel of mutation, mm -hmm. that's been a big one, just personally realizing that <clears throat> I hadn't really thought about it in our relationship as much, but yeah, I've caused a lot of mutation in this one. <laughs> I'm a mutant. And you never know what you're going to get, so that's interesting. Like the eight ball. De definitely the whole, like, just going into a room and changing the energy of that channel. That's interesting to be aware of. Makes me want to hermit more. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, yeah, sure what's gonna happen. <laughs> um, but, yeah. It's been good, but it's a, it's a journey that's not anywhere near its end. I'm so psyched about 2027 and what kind of changes that's going to bring to the world and how that'll affect all of us. <laughs> well, I mean, it's happening. <laughs> it's True. definitely happening. True. And that's the thing I forget. It's kind of a slow happening. Stars are always moving and it doesn't just shift on a dime. This has been amazing. <laughs> I really loved catching up with you two. I love, first of all, I just want to point out, I love that you were holding hands the whole time. Yeah. Like it's such a, it's such a beautiful, subtle, <laughs> intimate way of being close to somebody. And I feel like it's always a really good marker when, you know, I see that in couples that, they they do want to be in physical contact with one another. It's funny because there's a picture of us from uh, when we landed on the shore of California, <laughs> and we are not holding hands. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if I was in love with him at that point. So I was just like, oh, this guy. <laughs> 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 must have been an error. It must have been an error. <laughs> so leading to a trial. We definitely went through. I think they wrote it backwards. I'm pretty sure it's error and trial. <laughs> <laughs> was first I make an error and then I get put on trial and then <laughs> and then I'm hung. <laughs> that is the perfect three five headline if I ever heard one. <laughs> <laughs> well it's wonderful to see you both it's wonderful to watch this evolution 
this journey that's nowhere near done because <laughs> you're still breathing. <laughs> and uh, I look forward to seeing what unfolds in the future. It's a fun ride. We're happy. We're having fun. Yeah. We, yeah, we, we appreciate everything you've done and do for us and everyone else. Thank you so much, Aaron. You're right. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Whew, so much juicy stuff. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to get notified every time I drop one of these. You can also ask me questions in the comments below. I answer them. I love to respond. So please do. And I'll also drop my website in the show notes. There you can see all the ways that we can work together. I'll see you next time. Ciao for now.